the uh, didascleria, as you well know, the third century document is the first place that we read of the early church, uh, maybe even dating back to those 12 ap apostles who would stand during worship for the reading of the gospel. What a wonderful uh, sign of reverence and respect that we would stand for the gospel reading. Would you stand with me to hear these words from Matthew 5, the center of Jesus' teaching about the kingdom of God, the beginning, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon of all time you will hear this morning. Not what I say, but in part you'll hear some of the greatest sermon, the greatest uh, oration of all of history. Matthew 5 begins, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them. Blessed, <clears throat> excuse me, um, should have practiced. <laughs> Let's start over. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. It kind of reminds me of this story. Um, uh, my friend, who was, not myself, my friend, but my real friend, uh, was pa a pastor at Second Baptist Church. Not this one. There are others like us. We have a secret handshake, don't you know? I'll teach it to you later. We have this grand communion of those of us who are not first. It's great. <laughs> he gave me the distinct honor, invited me to stand beside him on one of the greatest days of his life, his wedding day, asked me to be in his wedding. Now, if you don't, if we're friends and you don't ask me to be in your wedding, that's just fine. You just saved me a lot of money. Normally, one a friend would ask uh, to be, for me to have the honor to be in their wedding, I would be all about thrilled even with the concept, the concept that we used in our wedding. Let's buy suits and not rent tuxes, right? You probably spend the exact same amount of money and then you get to keep it, you know? Except for on this one occasion, this friend, we'll call him, wanted to get married in pants that were pink. He wanted us to wear these fancy blue socks. Got a great coat out of the deal, wear it all the time. This shirt I bought didn't own a pair of cufflinks until he invited me to be in his wedding and spend thousands of dollars on the clothes that he wanted to pick. But then I got me a pair of cufflinks. I got this bow tie that you've seen before. This is the third and final time that I will be wearing these pants. <laughs> It's great to be invited to be in these weddings, you know, and you get to go out and you buy a suit, and now I have at least six sermon illustrations hanging in my closet. My wife, as well, has a number of dresses from these bridal moments. She says, look, there's pockets in it so I can wear it later. Like, what does that have to do with its wearability? I'm, I'm uh, still... So there we were... At his wedding day, I was one of the lucky 12 who got to stand beside him. He was a minister. His wife was a minister. There were other bridesmaids who were ministers. There were at least four other groomsmen that were ministers. And here she comes at the back of the room, beautiful, and the congregation stands as they should. And she comes down the aisle with her father. Father choked up, couldn't say anything, just passed her off and went back to his seat. And there's, the, you know, you wonder among all these ministers, who, which ministers are going to be the one to actually do the wedding, you know? And lucky duck didn't have to buy pink pants. And he began his spiel, you know, up there at the front. And, a nice welcome and a prayer. And then, you know, we got to that, that wedding homily. And I, I'm standing over here. I think I would have been aware of this regardless, but my wife is the wedding photographer. And she's at the back of the room, standing on a chair that's on top of a ladder so that she can get a picture amidst everyone standing. And the guy just keeps going. 
And so I, I'm thinking, I, I think I have the lowest rank among all these people, but whatever, you know. So I've got my hand like this, okay? And I'm like motioning to just anyone who might give me a look, you know. And if ever in my ministerial career the words were true, if just one would respond and make a movement, then all would respond in like term. You can be seated. <laughs> you thought I forgot. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountainside and sat down. Have you ever even noticed? Every week I climb these stairs and stand in front of you. I stand upon the word of God. I stand in this space held beautifully by you and others who come before me. And ironically, it is the Savior of the universe. It is the Christ. It is the complete expression of all love and all wisdom amidst a massive crowd who climbs the mountaintop and sits down. And it's not there in the text, but I can't help but to wonder if the thousands gathered, if they sat down as well. As so though Jesus is saying, in order for you to receive the beauty and the power and the salvation of these words, we need to sit together. Sixty years ago and one day, in Greensboro, South Carolina, Azel Blair Jr., David Richmond, Joseph McCain, and Reggie McNeil, walked in to Woolworth's Diner in Greensboro, South Carolina, which had many a signs projecting, we serve whites only. And these four young students found their way to the counter and ordered coffee and donuts. And these four young black men were ignored. And so they sat. They sat there in peace and in love and in hope, they sat down. <laughs> and the police were called and the police responded to the situation and the police said, there's, there's no disturbance here. There's no, there's no violence here. These men are, are, simply, are simply sitting. And these four young men inspired a movement of sit-ins that spread across this country working towards equality, and justice in our country, and they did so by sitting. Young people, we need you as we needed these four to show us how to sit. And today that diner in Greensboro, South Carolina is the International Center for Civil Rights. That diner has been restored and you can go and you can visit the very counter in which these four men sat. There's a replica of this diner sitting at the, uh, the Smithsonian for American history in our nation's capital. And maybe you uh, might visit that and hear the call. The call of our faith, which is sometimes to sit. To just sit. Now, is there a time to stand up and act and speak? Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. And is there a time when we climb a mountain in the presence of our God and to engage in all wisdom and truth and salvation, all that is required is that we just might sit. Our adult retreat speaker, Kathy Escobar, whom we will, uh, some, some of us will have a wonderful opportunity to spend some time with her. I encourage you to continue her and her family in your prayers as they grieve the loss of a son. She, in her community in North Denver, the Refuge Church, a small, wonderful, uh, beautiful community, have, have called these verses, these beatitudes, the center of, of the guiding voices within this community, suggesting that the blessedness, the blessed life, is where Jesus says, is not gone just up the mountain, but is when Jesus sits down. 
That this is the direction of the gospel, that the gospel leads us down. She tells a story that one year the community was having a, 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 a big fundraiser, an event, a concert. And this concert was to pay for a particular section of their ministry that helped, that helped people in financial trouble through the rest of the year. It was a big event, ironically, even though it's a small community, brought in a big name band. And there she is, Kathy Escobar, pastor, uh, finds herself in the front row and someone has come to her and given her an envelope and asked, I'd like for you to open it now, which as we all know, church members never do things that are awkward and out of place and ill-timed. And so they hand her an envelope and she begins to open it and she thinks she sees what she sees, so she walks back to the back of the room to, to look at the contents of this envelope and there's a note and there's a check. And on the name of this check is, is a, a young woman even, a young woman who for most of her adult life had struggled with the trauma that she had been through, had struggled with, with, with a battle of addiction, had struggled not just to take care of her own children, but now is, is in a place in which she's struggling to take care of her grandchildren. And it was this ministry just last year that she's now attending, uh, attending a, a fundraiser event for this very same ministry. It was just the year before that she went through, uh, she went through this ministry. They coached her through bankruptcy. And just a week before this year's concert, she had opened her very first checking account. And she cannot wait to attend this year's fundraiser, this year's concert, because she was going to write her very first check. And she wrote her very first check and wrote a note to her pastor and put it in an envelope, had someone take it to her pastor. And her pastor is in the back of the room reading, I'm so thankful to give this very small amount on the very first check to support the work of God through this ministry. And Kathy writes, I'm surrounded by people and all I can do is sit down in the corner of the room. Have you had a phone call? And the voice on the other line says, um, are you sitting? You're gonna wanna be sitting down for this. Have you, have you walked outside of a really great concert only to see religious pontificators on the street corner with their bullhorn telling you how bad the concert was that you just went to? Standing on the street corner. Have you, like me, because of your mobility, because of your God-given legs, been able to avoid people? People that you need to sit down with and that you need to have a conversation with? Uh-oh. I believe that probably some of the most spiritually enriching moments in my life have been with a cup of coffee and a chair and a sunrise and with no shoes. Will you receive the call, the call from Christ this morning to sit? No more activity, no more busybody, no more we got to get it done. Will you simply sit? Jesus climbed up a mountainside. And as the crowds came, he sat down. And his disciples gathered around him and he began teaching. And he said these words. Blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed of those blessed are you who mourn. Are you are you mourning? Blessed are you when you mourn, Jesus said, for you will be comforted. And Christ continued teaching them and saying, Blessed are the meek. Not blessed are the tall, not blessed are those of you who wear pink pants. Blessed are those of you who are meek, for you will inherit the earth. Christ continued teaching them, saying, Blessed are those of you who thirst and, for hung and hunger for righteousness. Are you seeking? Are you seeking that communion with God? And Jesus says, If you seek, you will be filled. Christ continued teaching them, saying, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. 
And Jesus says, blessed are those of you who are pure in heart, who are single-minded, who are focused, for you will see God. And Jesus taught them, saying, blessed are the peacemakers, not just the peacekeepers, those who strive to make peace in your family and in your city and in your workplace. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called the children of God. Jesus says blessed are you when you face difficulty, when you are persecuted for righteousness sake for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus concluded his teaching by saying blessed are you Blessed are you when all kinds of evil and falsity is said against you, particularly because of my name's sake. Great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward on heaven for Christ's sake. For in the same way did they persecute all of the prophets who have come before you. Jesus taught these words. And your pastor would like to encourage you with these words. Blessed are you when you sit. Blessed are you when you sit in the presence of God. Let's pray together. May we pull our chair up to your table, O oh God. May, may you make a place for us. May your table be filled with loved ones. And may you sit with us now as you always have and as you always will. Remove our need to do. Remind us of your love and your grace and your goodness which is above and beyond and before all things. In the name above and beyond and before all names, the name of true love, the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.